Right, there's my trout graph. Part four now uh, actually starts to ask about this other fish that's in here. Right? It says, when is the rate of increase of carp equal to the rate of decrease of trout? Hmm. Now, just put your pen down for a moment and think. Um, this is one of those very, very rare cases where they give you a differential equation for carp, right? Um, but then they don't actually give you the actual equation for carp and then say, now just prove that this satisfies blah, blah, blah. You actually have to work that bit out, okay? So we're gonna have to have two pieces of information here, right? It says, when is the rate of increase of carp? So carp is P, right? Did I write that? No, I didn't. Maybe you wrote it down. Carp is P. So the rate of increase of carp is going to be dp on dt, right? That's the rate of increase of the carp, okay? The trout though are decreasing, okay? So here's the number of trout. What's the rate of decrease of the trout? Okay, so I'm gonna get a derivative out of this, right? dn on dt. Because they're decreasing, this will be negative, yeah? But I wanna know when the rate here and the rate there match. If that's positive, all the time, because they're getting bigger, and this is negative all the time, when are they going to be equal? If one thing is always positive and the other thing is always negative. And the answer is, they never occupy the same space, so these two numbers are never going to be equal. But the rates being equal means that this will be equal. Does that make sense? Because you're just taking the rate and you're saying, well, turn it upside down and you'll have the same number, you know, trout per month and carp per month. Does that make sense? Now, dn on dt, we can work that out quite easily because we have n. So can you help me work out what dn on dt is? Have a look. There it is. Negative 0 0.04. Uh, negative 0 0.04 that's uh, come from the inside function of chain rule. And then the e to the blah, 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 that's all still the same. There's dn on dt. Okay. Now, we have an expression for dp on dt. But it's not very useful, right? Have a look, let's write it there. 0.02p, this is the differential equation, okay? Now, why is this not very useful? Yeah, I don't know what p is, right? And also, I'm trying to find out the question, look really carefully, right? What is the actual question asking for? What's the answer, like my final line is going to be, is it a number of trout, a number of carp? What's the question asking? It's asking for a time. Now this is in terms of time, thumbs up, but this is not in terms of time. It's in terms of the population, right? So I need to t go from this equation to one where it is in terms of time. Then I can combine these two together and then I can solve. So you need an equation for this in terms of time. You're gonna have to begin with an equation for this in terms of time. And they don't tell you what it is, okay? Now, what topic are we in? Uh, exponential growth and decay, right? There it is. So I know, and it's two unit, I know every exponential growth and decay situation is gonna have a very similar kind of form, a similar kind of equation. It's gonna look a lot like that one, right? Is it increasing or decreasing? This is carp, right? It's increasing, so there's some, I don't think I've used capital A yet, there's some value you start with, and then it increases, according to my growth rate, okay? Now you can go ahead and if you're like, where did that come from? Well, remember you start with an equation like this and then you have to differentiate to get to that. See where that 0.02 comes from? It comes from the same place that this 0.04 came from, from that index, okay? So you can go ahead, you can differentiate, and you can prove to yourself that you get back to that, but this is still not enough. It's still not enough because I don't know what A is, right? So how do I find out what A is? I need some kind of condition. Thankfully, I do know how many carp there were at time zero. How many, look, how many? There were 10, right? So I can say when t equals zero, initially, there were 10 carp that they put into the lake because they wanted to get rid of all the trout. I don't know. So I can uh, substitute all of those things in and quickly, you get an equation, right? Which by the way, sometimes you'll even see the question will not call this A, it'll call it something like P0, P0, to indicate in this model, that's the population at time zero, okay? All right, 
at last, I now actually can take this and get a dp on dt out of it. If p is this, can you please differentiate for me and tell me what you get for dp on dt? I'll give you a spoiler warning. It starts with zero point. What's someone got for me? 0 0.2. 0 0.2, so watch out for those decimal places, right? That 10 hanging out the front, multiplied by 0 0.02, gives you that. Uh, and this is still here. You could have also done that from here as well, okay? All right, so now I've got these two rates. So I can say, <coughs> excuse me, the rates equal, the rates equal when, And I've got this rate here, and I slap the minus sign on the front, that just gives me the absolute value of that. So 0.04e to the that equals 0.2e to the that. Please, please, please watch out for all of your decimal points. Uh, you can come up with a very nonsensical answer just by, for example, writing 0.2 here and forgetting that that's 0.02. It's a different number because it's come from the derivative. So you can go ahead. What will be a, a sensible thing to do first out of this to simplify it? You want to know your t's in one spot, right? They're currently in two. What operation should I do to get them into one spot? Get into one spot. Think, what operation am I going to apply to both sides? Uh, I could take the log first if I wanted, but I think it makes sense to have one. Oh, have I done something wrong? Yeah, which? which? Yeah, negative you mean here? No. Think carefully. What am I asking for, right? Why is there not a negative here? It's because this rate of increase, sorry, this is a decrease actually, should match this rate of increase, right? If I had a minus sign here, you know when you're going to get an answer? Answer, you are never going to get an answer. They will never meet, okay? But actually, I want to compare when their values, their magnitudes are the same. So I actually can ignore the sign, if that makes sense. I'll take the absolute value if you like, all right? Um, you can go ahead, if you pop the minus sign here, um, go and get an answer and you'll find um, no real solution, okay? All right, can someone suggest to me what to do? I'm, st I'm still thinking about what might be a, an appropriate thing to apply to both sides. If I gave you this, hmm. What would you do to that? Would that be simpler if I gave you that? If you want, you're solving for t, right? What are you going to do to that? Divide. You should divide both sides by... You'd probably choose this, right? Because it's the smaller one, right? That's what you know, normally do. So I want you to have a look over here. Which one is the smaller one? It's this guy, isn't it? So I'm going to divide both sides by that. Okay, I guess at the same time I might as well deal with these constants, okay? Once you've gone through, you should get a time. What'd you get? 8, say it again. Dot, 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 dot. Okay, 